AW released their rankings. Yeah. First ranking well, since August of 2022. I'm not a fan of the rankings already. Well, here we go, everybody. Men's champions. Well, we already know those. All right. Number one contender for the men's title. Swerve. That's fine. Number two, Hangman. Well, it's in the storyline. They're wrestling for the championship shot next week, so they should be one and two. Number three, Adam Copeland. Fine. You know, and he's going to get the shot at the um, TNT title next, and he's been winning matches. That's fine. Number four is John Moxley. Yeah, he wins all his matches. That's fine. And number five is Roderick Strong. Mm, he's getting his title shot at Orange Cassidy, so they could throw him in there, but... Uh... It's pretty ridiculous that he's ranked ahead of Brian Danielson or, you know, who's getting who's also going to be in a championship match with uh, Eddie Kingston soon. But, I mean, if you look at just who, who they've beaten, um, I mean, it's Rod, Rod, Roderick hasn't beaten anyone and lost to, um, uh, he lost to Adam Page fairly recently. And um, Danielson, you know, I mean, he did lose a couple times in the tournament, but he's also got a lot of big wins. So, um, and against tougher competition. And, uh, you know, so, whatever, whatever. Those are the rankings. You know, I mean, he just ranked guys other than Moxley, and I guess that probably means Moxley's going to be in the mix of something or some big matches. But, um, you know, he's ranking guys that are going to be getting title shots very soon. So, that's there's your deal. For the uh, women, number one contender is Deanna Parazzo. Who's, who's, what, got a couple of wins? Yeah. I mean, she's getting the title shot, so he might as well rank her number one contender, but... I mean, who who's the toughest one she's beaten? Thunder Rosa, rank ranked number two. What about Thunder? Well, Thunder Rosa. The only thing I'll say about Thunder Rosa was is that she was the champion who never lost the championship. So at some point, you know, the idea was that when she vacated the title, that she would be getting a title shot soon. She's and she's had a couple of wins, um, but she probably should be getting a title shot soon. So whatever. And it's not like it's not like there's a lot of depth in the women's division. Number three is Akaru Shida. Number four is Sky Blue. Number five is Mariah May, who's had two matches all year. Ever, actually. Ever. In AW. In AW. Yeah, and Sky Blue, who's, who's had some wins. But, um, you know, how would you rank Sky Blue ahead of people like Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander, who've probably beaten her? Um, so, I don't Isn't know. Isn't this supposed to be based entirely on their win-loss records in January? Because I, everything resets at the beginning of the year? That makes no sense. That's that what it is, sense. though. That, isn't it that what be, it always it, has been? No. No. It should be based on, you know, their win-loss record as, you know, going, you know, leading up to everything. You know, like whether it's six months or a year or whatever. It's their ranking and who they beat. Well, yeah, and, but every year they've announced that everything starts over in January. That's literally what they've done every time when they had rankings. Only the, only the wins-loss records, not the rankings. The win-loss records, which is so totally different. The win loss record starting. If you're ranking based on January, then that that doesn't make any sense because then it's like you, you know, you're ranking based on four weeks. That doesn't even make sense. So it'd have to be. Well, yeah, I mean, it does. That's how that's how Roderick Strong is number five. Yeah, it doesn't ranking ranking based on a month in a business that goes back. I mean, when you're ranking like, uh, well, no, it'll continue. So so you know, February will still can count January as win loss and. March will still count January, why but once December, you get to January, it all restart. It all resets. Why, would, why should why should November and December not count? I don't know. I'm just telling you what their rule has always been. No, the rule. I didn't the say rule. it made sense. That's, that's the rule. No, that's the rule of the win loss records, not the rule of the rankings. The win loss records they reset. But the rankings are but, based on the win loss record. But most of the time, they forgot about the restart anyway, and they just go compile the you know half the time when they go out there. Like Moxley, like uh, they had a win-loss record, which dated back from the beginning of AEW, and other guys have done that. So that's an inconsistent thing anyway. But um, that, no, because like in UFC or something like that, they they can, they can they consider matches that are probably years old if someone beats someone. So it's, you know, any kind of sports ranking, you don't start like in the middle of the season and only rank the last, like for college football. You know, you wouldn't just rank the last four weeks. You know, you would rank from you know the start of the, this from the start, and the start is uh, 2019 here. You know, boxing would be the same way. And I mean, college football probably isn't a good isn't a good one. You know, com comparison anyway, but it should be similar to boxing. Boxing, it's it's 
you know, they again boxing in uh and um kickboxing and UFC and all kinds of combat sports ratings. It's based it's essentially based on your career but with a heavy emphasis on recency. Well yeah, but, but they also none of them reset your win loss at the beginning of the year. They do that, but then they they also don't do that. Well, no, you would never see BJ Penn fighting, and they would say he's zero and zero because he hasn't fought at all this year. Yeah, but sometimes they would keep uh, his rating from or his rank or his win loss record from his entire career. But some, when, if you look on the website with, for win loss records, they have the whole career records, not the not the records from January. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm talking that's about UFC. You're talking about no, I'm AEW. Talking about does? A, I'm talking about AEW. Oh well, that's nice. Yeah, but they're they're supposed to they 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 reset he, in January okay. now. Okay, they only said reset in January the first year, and then he stopped doing that because he was always using career records or AW career records. So you're telling me they're not resetting? I don't know. They never said reset this year, and sometimes they, it's inconsistent. Sometimes they just go. They do what's ever convenient at the time. Like if if they want to make somebody look good. And they've only had like two matches. They may go two and zero oh in in whatever. If if they want to do something about a winning streak, they may go. He's won eighteen of his last twenty one, which isn't like that. Or they may just go with the whole career record. You know, he's got you know fifty singles wins or whatever like that. So they 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 do the records based on whatever is convenient at that moment to make the person look the best that they can. You know, like uh, you know so. They do, you know, which is what they should do. You know, when you're talking about like, a, you know, a winning streak in football, you go back or, you know, a, or a fighter. You know, if a fighter is, let's say that they won one fight and then the previous fight they lost and they won seven of, before that. So you just go, he's won eight out of his last nine. Um, if he's got three wins in a row and then got two losses before you go, he's got three wins in a row and you ignore the two losses when you're trying to build them up. It's about building up people, using the wins and loss records to build up people. But there's, there's never been any kind of a consistency in, in what statistics they use in AEW. They use the statistics that makes the most sense at that moment. And sometimes they don't because like uh, with Commander, I just remember, you know, um, or, or AR Fox was actually even worse getting a championship match and then he walks down the aisle and it says like this records one and nine or something like that and commander was was similar you know he, he only his, got championship matches and only and always lost yes yeah and commander was the same way like i remember like he was doing one of those matches just a couple of weeks ago and you know they had that whatever the record was you know like two and 12 or whatever it was it was not a good record and i'm going like you know, now you're not only because one of the problems with the commander is like, you know, they love to book him in matches because he's so good, but they they usually beat him. And, you know, so it's like his record is is pretty terrible. And I always figured, like, if his record's terrible, don't show his record because, you know, it emphasizes people if they if they kind of remember and think, God, this guy always loses. That's one thing. But when he walks down the aisle and you see like one and nine or two and 12, it's like that kind of reinforces it and kind of tells you, you got a guy like that, even if he's really flashing good, you know, the the public looking at that record just goes, man, you know, two and 12, he's a jobber. So anyway, um, I am, I don't know. They had the Dark Order ranked in the tag teams, you know, come on. And no FTR. Oh, we'll get to that. So the uh, the tag team contenders, number one contenders are Sting and Darby Allen. That's fine. They're undefeated and they're getting a title shot next week, so they should be ranked number one. Number two is John Silver and Alex Reynolds. Yeah, completely. I, mean, I have I, not seen them. I guess I haven't watched every Rampage. They, they've or actually maybe gotten, I've been they, they've out. gotten a bunch of Ring of Honor wins. So they got Ring of Honor wins to rank them in the AW tag team title rankings? Yeah, they're they're, they're counting Ring of Honor wins, yeah. Yeah. They have a bunch of wins over Brandon Cutler and um, and Colt Cabana. Oh. Yeah, so that's why they're ranked high. But it makes, you know, again, John Silver and... Once, once you put John Silver and Alex Reynolds as number two contenders for your tag team, what it says to me looking at this is, man, they don't got any good tag teams if these guys are number two because, you know, you never see them beat anybody of any note. Well, they, they do have good tag teams, but we have FTR, which is not ranked. Danielson and Claudio are three. Orange Cassidy and Trent are five. Private Party is four. Is Private Party, Private Party won any matches? 
Um, they, they didn't they win one match? They might From, have um, they, won they won a match, match to get them there. Where are the Young they, Bucks? Well, the Young Bucks haven't wrestled in a long time. So they're getting they're getting a tag team championship match just because the match with Sting and Darby has already been signed. If Sting and Darby win the titles, yes, yes, you know. they probably should be ranked just because they're like one of the best tag teams, you know, arguably the best tag team the company's ever had. And FTR, which is the well, other you best, you know, tag things team the reset, team. brother. They reset. Yeah, well, Pentagon, you know, there's but but it's ludicrous if you have tag team ratings and you don't rate FTR, who are former champions. They're the ones who uh, Big Bill and Ricky Stark beat for the titles. And um, they are they unranked. Makes no sense at all. Then we got the trios titles. Number one contenders are Bullet Club Gold, even though are they're the, all a unit. Even though Bullet Club Gold are the Ring of Honor champions. Yeah. You told me Ring of Honor counted. Yeah, but their champions should be listed as champions. Well, actually, yeah, the other point is if Ring of Honor, if champions count, like, you know, why, Kyle is, Fletcher should, Kyle why Fletcher is Orange should be Cassidy ranked. not the number one contender? For the yeah, world Kyle, title. Why isn't Kyle Fletcher ranked? Kyle Fletcher's done nothing but win this year. Yeah. Why isn't, you know, yeah, I mean, Kyle Fletcher's done nothing but win this year. Jericho hasn't lost in as long as I can remember. He's he lost to Hobbs. He lost to Hobbs. Last so Hobbs, year. Hobbs should be ranked. Yeah, no Takeshi Hobbs. should be ranked. Takeshi should beat Kenny Omega. Hasn't lost since. We got uh, the Hardys and Mark Briscoe are the number two contenders. Dark Order number three. Oh, FTR and Daniel Garcia are ranked number four in the six man. But they're a tag Trios team. They've, they've done they're the two six man tags. Yeah, that's enough to get number four here, brother. Mm. And number five is House of Black. Didn't they lose one of them? Didn't the six mans? Well, of course. They, they, they just lost the, they on won, collision. They won the cage match. FTR and uh, the House of Black lost, in, uh, lost the cage match. Yes. Yeah. So they're number five. Okay. Well, there you go. That's the rankings. Do we have to do this every month when they come out? No. I, I think the rankings are best ignored, honestly. Mm. You know, I mean, unless that they... After uh, all that, now you're saying they should be ignored? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.